Hey everyone, me Kevin here with your late stimulus and news update for August 25th. I also have some important updates for you on real estate, COVID vaccines, and some of my favorite stocks. Also quick note, some of you have been asking, and I just wanna get this out of the way really quick. Some of you have been asking, hey, just straight up, like what's the easiest way to get started investing in stocks? I don't know how to pick an index fund. I don't know how to pick stocks. I don't wanna pick stocks, it's too stressful. And I get that, like I might be a stock picker. I might like buying real estate, but what, what would my advice be like for anybody to begin? Hey, I got 500 bucks, I got $1,000, I got five grand, 10 grand, whatever. What's the easiest way to start with possibly the most balanced risk? And what I found is this company Wealthfront, basically what they do is they let you put money in automatically and they're a robo advisor and they'll automatically put your money into like five to 20 different index funds and they balance it out for you. So you get exposure to like real estate, international, local, dividends, this, growth, that. It's, it's, I've liked it. Uh, I used it a lot. I had a lot of success with it. They charge a tiny fee. It's like $2.50 per thousand dollars to invest with them. Uh, if you use the link below metkevin.com slash start, they'll uh, manage your first $5,000 for free. So it's something to check out. I, I'd recommend go to their website, browse around. They got a savings account investing. Account. Check it out uh, and, and see if that helps you get started. Now, let's talk stimulus. On stimulus, Mitch McConnell, who goes by many names like Grumpy Mitch, Moscow Mitch, Grim Reaper Mitch, Mitchy Mitch, just spoke today about stimulus. And I have to give him some props because it's been a while that we've actually heard some positivity from Mitch McConnell. And to me, this is really good news because when Mr. Grim Reaper has been a little down in the dumps, that's not good. And I'm not talking false hope either. And this morning, I told you, it feels like we're sort of at the bottom of this barrel in terms of hope that we've been led on for so long that we're just like at the bottom of barrel, like, seriously? Like, no, I don't believe it anymore. And, and that's how I feel too. But the last couple days, I've been starting to see some light come out. Uh, and Mitch McConnell finally talked about stimulus checks again, like final freaking leap. And I think they're finally realizing that if they don't do something, the economy's going to get screwed and they're all getting voted out. And if you watched my video during lunchtime, you already know that some people are suggesting that, and, and these are, you know, like hedge fund managers and, and people with power here in the country, you know, the wealthy people. It's ridiculous, messed up power struggle here. But anyway, uh, the longer we wait, they're suggesting, there's more of a chance that we'll actually see a bigger stimulus package, mostly because so many more things will be broken. Kind of ironic, like if we had passed a stimulus package a couple of months ago, maybe we'd see less damage, but it would be smaller. Weird, right? This country, this is why it's broken. Anyway, if you didn't see that video, you can check it out on my channel. Sometimes YouTube doesn't send all the notifications. Uh, Mitch McConnell acknowledged that right now we're in a stalemate on negotiations, but he told us he hasn't given up hope. Now, those were his, his words. He said, I have not given up hope that we can get another stimulus package done soon. He said that he believes we need another stimulus package and he said the following, that now is the time to number one, get stimulus checks out. We need $1,200 stimulus checks to go out. Those would go to the same recipients as last time and those would also include people in the lower incomes and uh, healthcare workers and hospitality workers, you know, folks folks who really, really need help right now. And so he was inclusive of uh, by mentioning those folks. Uh, he is, of course, referring to his HEALS Act, which would give $1,200 stimulus checks and $500 to dependents of any age. Same income thresholds for the first check or as the first check. Second thing he said is he complained that there have now been over 3,000 lawsuits filed already and that we need liability protections because Mitch says it's not fair to sue somebody who knew nothing about COVID and was learning just like the rest of us. He then went on to demand a second round of PPP money and talked a little bit more about what has been done, but really what's left to be done. And I have to say, this is the first time I've really seen the leader of the Republican party come out and say, yeah, we need to do more. And when I say leader of the Republican Party, I mean leader of the, of the Senate's Republican Party. Uh, this is good. This is a really good change in tune. It's bad because obviously we need it because things are broken, but it's good because it means finally we're going to get some healing, some actual healing, not this bogus Heals Act, which is doing nothing other than sitting dead on somebody's desk. Anyway, to me, that was very interesting. Uh, furthermore, and, and hopeful, like the, this is the light that I'm starting to see, and I'm happy about that. I'm, I'm usually try to be a very optimistic person, and, and no, it's really hard, easy to be negative in this country, uh, but honestly, I, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better about this. 
Uh, and uh, he said another thing that was super, sort of more interesting, I suppose, from a technical POV. He said that a lot of vaccines are actually already in production for COVID, something that we might not be aware of. Yeah, uh, and he said that most of the manufacturers are already producing the vaccines, even though they're in phase three trials, uh, mostly because there's going to be so much demand for these vaccines as soon as they get approval, they wanna be able to ship them out the day they get approval. Uh, to me, I thought this was really interesting because it means the vaccine companies are making big bets on manufacturing a drug that, oh, you know, we want you to change the ingredients a little bit. Although most of those manufacturers are realistically using bailout money they got from the government because the government has given like six different companies billions of dollars each to rush a vaccine. Trump also stated on his agenda for re-election that he wants to see a vaccine by the end of 2020 at the latest, which many people find optimistic. But you know what? In some sense, I kind of need a little more optimism right now. Things are feeling really dark uh, and depressing. I, I hate being stuck inside myself. California is obviously a little more wild uh, in terms of strict. Speaking of Donald Trump, there's been a lot of talk about Donald Trump's payroll tax cut ruining Social Security by 2023. In my RNC video where I, I reacted to sort of day one of the RNC, again, probably not a notification you got, I posted that this morning. I mentioned that this is not the intention of the Republican party. And I'm not taking sides. It's like every single video I make, I get people, oh, your left is showing, oh, your right is showing. It's like, <laughs> maybe I'll keep a tally. And if I get an equal amount of those comments, at least I know I'm doing my best. But in all fairness to what's true, there is no plan to ruin social security. I think that's fear mongering by the left. Now, all the Republican party is saying is they want to have a payroll tax cut that pays people $6 more for every $100 they earn at their job as an incentive to work and get back to work. Now there are limits on this. You don't get this if you make more than about 100K a year, but the social security part, you know, if it was true that social security was getting defunded, it might affect you. Well, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin already said, no, it's gonna come out of the general trust fund. And today, Larry Kudlow finally clarified this again. And basically, he had like a six minute interview and let me just shorten it into one sentence for you. Larry Kudlow said, we're not defunding social security. We're just gonna borrow the money. He said that more elaborately. He was talking about bonds and treasury bills and buying notes and blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. It's just gonna borrow the money. So whatever tax cut they give, they're gonna borrow the money to make sure social security is still funded. Now, obviously that would have to actually happen. We'd actually have to see them borrow that money to, to find that to be true. But at least to me, that's the truth of what the plan is right now. So in fairness to all sides, I'm kind of upset that Nancy Pelosi is perpetuating this and, and a lot of people, you know, I think the Democratic National Convention and sort of their parties are putting too much emphasis on they're trying to kill social security. When in my opinion, it makes them look bad because at first it's like, what, what? The other side's trying to kill social security, but then you kind of open up the hood and you're like, that's not what they're trying to do. They're just trying to get people to take more money home and they're gonna borrow money to offset that money that they're not getting from there. Man, why are you making it look that way then? It, like, that's how I feel about it. When I, when, when I read these things, that's the same reaction I have. I read these things either on my iPad or my computer or sometimes even the newspaper. Yeah, I actually do get the newspaper. And I'm like, man, that's not what they mean. <laughs> so just kind of a glimpse into my world, I suppose. I feel like I'm doing that all day long though. <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, but anyway, <laughs> hashtag man. <laughs> Uh, to me, it's uh, really one of those arguments that's that's basic and sounds bad. But again, you look closely and it's like, no, that's that's not right. Uh, it, you know, just trying to be balanced here. It's not my fault that if you had like a flat map, sometimes I feel this way. If you had a flat map, uh, you'd have like CNN uh, all the way to the left and uh, Fox News all the way to the right. You'd almost have to like tape them to the edge of the paper because I think they're just so far to the sides, they're getting ready to kind of like fall off the edge <laughs> into the abyss. Uh, anyway, let's keep moving on. On uh, real estate, and then we'll talk COVID in a moment. On real estate, if you own real estate, make sure you watch the video I posted about the new deadline for real estate. It has to do with loans and refinancing and interest rates. Really, 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 really important. Also good if you're thinking about selling because you can incorporate that timing. Really important information breaks down the complete time frame for you and it's a new change. We just had a three month uh, delay occur uh, in something very, very important. So check that out. On stocks, today was the first time that I bought a regular chunk of stocks 
in somewhere about probably 10, 15 days, something like that. Mostly because everything's just been green, 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 green. Been waiting for a good red day. Uh, today was the start of that, so I bought some stocks today in the uh, Met Kevin 1337V5. I also made a video about Purple, the mattress company. It's not sponsored. It's just why why I you know have them in the portfolio. I was getting a lot of people asking questions about why do you invest in Purple. There you go. Uh, remember, if you don't want to pick stocks, just look at the wealth front. Metkevin.com slash start. On COVID news, a top health official in Virginia declared that he wants to make COVID, well, the COVID vaccine, mandatory. That doesn't sound so exciting, uh, especially since, you know, vaccine, let's bottom line it, okay? It's going to be using technologies that haven't really been used before for a vaccine, and it's going to be completed in about a quarter of the time that normal vaccines get completed by and so having this be mandatory, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's receiving major backlash as well, and there might be religious exemptions. So if you're not religious and Mormons come knocking on your door because they're on their mission, you might want to answer your door this time uh, if you don't want to take the vaccine. And that's a joke. I'm, I'm not saying that you want to become a Mormon or join any religious organization solely to get out of taking a mandatory vaccine in Virginia. Furthermore, two European patients have officially been infected with COVID a second time. One in Belgium and another one in the Netherlands, or as the Germans like to say, Holland. A Belgian virologist told us that there is, quote, enough difference to be able to say that this is another strain, a second infection. Well, that sounds more painful than waiting for Congress to pass a stimulus check, which is exactly why we have to make sure we have two free stocks with Weeble and life insurance, both which we can get in as little as five minutes. Check out the links down below. Just make sure you deposit $100 with Weeble. And again, Weeble would be like if you wanted to pick stocks, right? Uh, also, the University of Alabama was started class one week ago now. And now the university has confirmed over 566 cases of COVID. This means COVID is spreading faster than STDs at their college. That's no slam on the University of Alabama. So University of Alabama, that's a college joke. Please, please don't sue me. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video. I really appreciate all of y'all's support. And folks, we'll see you later.